Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com Bringing another tying video today. Today a little bit different than normal. I'm going to add a, a review to today. Um, today, well actually lately, I've had the pleasure and honor of getting a review copy of Tim Camiso's new book, Fly Tying for Everyone. I suggest you order a copy, order it from Tim, order it from Amazon, wherever you buy your books from. But it's a great book. I've really enjoyed reading it and flipping through it. Uh, Tim even gives us a little shout out at the shop there. Of course, it's for mop flies. We put them onto some mop flies a long, long time ago that were a lot skinnier. And uh, we've caught a lot of fish on it. So um, thanks for the shout out there, Tim. I enjoyed that. And uh, it was kind of funny whenever I came across it. So I'm thankful for that. But back to the book it's a great book if you know Tim at all Tim's a great guy um, he's a school teacher he's very articulate great with his words it's an easy reading book if, if you're a reader which I'm not I'm not a big reader I'm uh, I don't read and comprehend well I I'm a hands-on kind of guy Tim takes care of that for you in the book it's, it's a great book really breaks down step-by-step -step instructions on how to tie a few flies and some tools and how to use them and different things like that. I can't say enough about it, it's a great book. But anyway, I wanted to promote Tim's book on the channel here. Tim and I are good friends. And I wanted to take the time and promote his book, but also by doing it, I thought, why don't I share one of your flies that he has in his book here? And uh, I was flipping through and one that I came across was the Extreme String Bait Fish, okay? You know me, when I tie a fly, I don't always use what the pattern calls for. Tim calls for a product from Semperfly, one that we don't carry in the shop, which is called Extreme String. Well, Extreme String is very similar to UV Polar Chenille. And uh, he ties it, his pattern is an all white one, which would be great for a shiner or a bait fish pattern like that. I like, we have a lot of black nose dace in our area, so I'm just gonna show you a black nose dace imitation of it. Um, it's made with craft fur, and I want to do a little trick here before I get into the video, show you how I use the video so I can flow through the video a lot better by prepping it beforehand and uh, how I do my craft fur. Uh, a long time ago, a couple years ago, the Swiss CDC clamp came out. I don't know if you remember that, but it's great for working with deer hair. It's also one of my go-to things for working with craft fur. I can really control my craft fur a lot better one thing when you're working with craft fur, if you pull up the craft fur and just cut it off, it gets real clumpy and messy. And that's one thing I don't like to do. So what I do is you can see here on my craft fur, it, I'm really neat about how I trim my craft fur off. And this CDC clamp is great for that. And what I do, I just lay my craft fur down on the table. There's sharp edges on here and that's the key. And you just shoot that right through just like I do on my deer hair video and then I'll pull it apart a little bit separate those fibers so I get the amount that I want and then I'm just going to come back in lift it up a little bit and then I'm going to trim it off real close to the uh, material base there so there, now you see I have the big clump of material in my Swiss CDC clamp. I'm just going to take that in my hand, grab it by the bases, pull the rest out, clump them all together, okay? There you'll see I have a nice clump of them. Take my Stonfo clip, my, my Stonfo brush, I should say and uh, brush out the underbelly in it, which is a whole bunch of little ones at the bottom. I just get all that little stuff at the bottom brushed out. And then there's always, they're, they're never even fibers. So you can see there's really long ones here. I'm just gonna pinch the long ones out so it makes it nice and even there. And put the long ones back in at an even place. And that's how I prepare my craft fur. Really simple way to do it. Um, really easy to do it with this Swiss CDC clamp. Yes, they're expensive, but that really sharp, not sharp, but um, really thin blade there really cuts through the craft fur, the deer hair, everything. That's why I really like using these and would suggest these to anybody. So as I get into the tying here, I'm already going to have these prepped so I can just throw them on, keep my video moving along. So guys, 
thanks for watching here. You're going to see the material, or sorry, you're going to see the fly in the vise and then the material list. I'm going to show you where I tied it in two different colors. One, I'm going to tie it with a brown back, so it's more like a black nose dace. And one with an olive, and it, it has a great look to it. So here you're going to see the pattern in the vise and then the material list to tie it. Okay, here you see my Black News Days version in the vise. Um, let's get into tying it. It's actually pretty easy compared to... It might look intimidating, but it's not that hard. For a hook, I use an 839 size 6 for this fly. And for thread, I'm using 140 denier brown. Yeah, actually it's rusty brown, but brown would work. And I'm just going to start it on and I'm going to wrap it up towards the head, towards the eye there. Now, you remember I already prepped my um, craft fur. So, I'm going to have my craft fur all ready to go here. I want to go about twice the length of the body. Maybe, you know, right around twice the length of the body. And then I'm going to switch hands, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over. And I want to get it so... I need a little extra fluff there out of the bottom, sorry. I want it twice the length of the fly sticking out over the eye. And we're going to hold it down right on top of the eye and in a nice tight clump, a nice tight wrap there. I'm going to wrap it right behind that eye and get it on there nice and tight. And then I'm going to trim this off at a sharp angle. By trimming it off at the angle, I can step my thread down and it'll smooth it out a little bit better. I just like to pinch it down as I go. I like to, especially on longer hooks like this, I like to hold it to control it a little bit better. So there you can see, let me back it up a little bit. There you can see I have my craft fur out over the eye of my hook. And now, we're going to come back out. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to spin my hook upside down. If you have a rotary vise, great, do it this way. If not, you can put it in the vise upside. Put your, turn your hook over. It's a little easier to work this way. So, now I'm going to take the white. I, I, when I did this, I prepped two clumps of white craft fur and one of brown. And I want to match up the length. I want the length of craft fur of the white and the brown to be the same length out at the tip here. So, we're just going to hold that in place so it comes out to the same length, as you see. And then, I'm going to wrap this down on top. I'm going to one or two loose wraps. Get it where I want it, pull it up, make it tight, and then tighten down on the hook. And again, a nice sharp cut here to taper that down again. I missed a couple fibers on your side. Okay, so just going to taper that down onto the hook there. Okay, so you see now I have my brown on my top, my white for the belly on the bottom, and I'll be able to separate them out to get the eye out here later. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide back and I'm going to put the tail on. For the tail, I'm using more craft fur, and I want this to come off the back, uh, not twice the length, but I don't want a real long fly altogether. I want about a three inch long fly. So, I want it to come back to where my, my front fur is going to come just short of the back fur, the tail fur. So, I'm going to tie that down on top, a couple loose wraps, and then what I'll do is I'll make sure it goes the whole way around my hook, and I'll wrap it back to the bend. And don't go too far around the bend. If you do, it'll curl that hair downward, which we do not want. Then I'm going to take my tail, and you see how I'm starting to taper here? I'm going to cut a taper in this, kind of to match up to that taper. So it just smooths this all out. It's going to smooth that body taper out real nice. And it's going to make your next materials easier to put on. 
Okay. So now you see we have our tail and our head. The next thing I'm going to put on is just a couple strands of crystal flash. Since it's a black stripe down the middle, I'm using four strands of black. I'm going to put them out at the length of the tail. Tie them down on one side. And then I'm going to pull the crystal flash over the other side and wrap it down so I have four strands going out each side. Now as I get it back, as I get my wraps back closer to the tail, I'm going to let go of them and kind of let them splay out a little bit on their own. So it's not just four strands of crystal flash sticking back each side. They, they kind of roll around a little bit. And then what I do is I grab a hold of the crystal flash on the back and I'll just kind of snip and try not to snip them at the same length. It, it just makes them flow a little bit better in the water. So kind of leave those at different lengths and uh, trim them off there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in with some UV polar chenille. And there's a direction it flows here. One direction all the fibers tend to flow backwards which is, you can barely see here but the fibers on this strand all are pointing down pointing towards the direction of the strand that's the end I like to tie down I don't like to tie down the other way because they tend to roll back with the fly better this way so I'm just gonna tie that down this is the difference between my fly and the fly in Tim's book the material here the UV polar chenille and as I wind it on. I'm just going to pull those fibers back as I go up. You can spread these wraps out a little bit. They don't have to be really tight because there's actually a lot of fibers on this one. You know, if you're thin on fibers, then go a little tighter on your wraps. So get this wrapped up and we're going to stop just shy of that head material there. I'm going to stop about an eye length shy right there and we're going to tie that off because I want that to have room for that head to lay back over this. Get about three or four nice tight wraps there and then we're going to trim that off. And then I'll a lot of times like just wet my fingers and pull back these polar chenille fibers a little bit. It helps a little bit. If you wet your fingers there you can see they tend to go back. Next thing I want to do is I want to separate the brown on the top and the white belly fibers apart. Pull them apart and then I'm going to pull them back towards the back of the fly. Be careful don't hit that hook because it's very sharp. And then I'm going to bring my thread in front of it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a big dam of thread right up here in the front. I don't like to go over. I like it to flare out a little bit like that. And I just want to push up against it. And what I'll do is I'll check with my head. I'll push my head over to make sure that it fits over the top and that I don't have too much thread there. And that is perfect on there. Once you, Then you can pop it up there and uh, you can tweak a little bit. Tweak the fibers of your hair. I like to have them wrap the whole way around where just the black line shows through kind of like that. So now I'm going to pop this head off and I'm going to whip finish right here quickly. Oops. And this is a little bit sometimes challenging. Yeah, my whip finishers fighting me today. So I'm going to take and I'm going to pull all those fibers back with my fingers and then I'm going to come in and whip finish and I can't hit my whip finish. There we go. There we go. Get one one good wet finish is really all you need here. Now we're going to come in with some UV glue. I'm going to make sure I get all these fibers pulled back out of the way. I'm going to use some medium viscosity UV glue and I'm going to put a little bit on each side. And I'm going to roll it around the whole way a, a little bit but try not to get it too close to the eye that's the main problem don't get it in the eye and if I get it the whole way around the better I want this this is going to be the glue for my head 
So I want it to go in the fiber some. And then we're going to slide our head up over our fish skull helmet there. And I'm going to slide it past the thread. And when I do that, some glue is going to come out the end. So I like to take another hook, just stick down in that eye there. Now even glue it with the hook in place. Now before I hit it with the glue, I'm going to look and make sure, like I said, I want to close that gap up right there. You can see nice blend of the brown into the white. And then I'm just going to hit it with my light and hold it on top of that helmet and really glue that thing in place. So I'm going to let this heat up here for a couple seconds and make sure I get it all glued in place. Then I'll wiggle out this hook. Oops. Oh boy, that's on there solid. Okay, once I get that hook out there, I'll a lot of times, you know, just clean it out make sure I can get a line through it and then the last thing I want to do is I want to take a little bit of super glue put it in the pre-made slot there for the eye and then this is a size number five uh, fish helmet here and fish mask so that means it's going to take a five millimeter eye um, using fire on this one you can use wind what, whichever one you prefer to use ice I uh, got a little bit extra glue, more than I wanted there. Take a little dab of that out of there. And uh, put my other side in. What I'll do is I'll glue each side in. And then I like to seal it with a little bit of bone dry. Oops. So I'm just going to put a dab of glue in there, push it into place so I know it's solid in place where I want it and then I like to put a little bit of bone dry on top of that and finish it up so we'll hit it with a little bone dry I do one eye at a time so it doesn't roll over and this just holds that gives it a little bit of extra glue to hold it in on top and now a lot of times um, I'll put it so it just rolls over the edge so it has a little extra to hold on to. And that is all that is to my Black Nose Dace version of Tim Camisa Sly. Okay guys, I hope you liked that video. Like I said, go out and find yourself a copy of Fly Tying for Everyone by Tim Camisa. It's a great book, great one to add to your fly tying library. Um, like I said, it's an easy read and you'll enjoy it. There's some great patterns, uh, in, great fishing patterns, not just patterns for techniques, but ones that are actually going to catch fish. So check out Tim's book, check out his channel, Trout and Feather. Um, just a great guy, easy to listen to and easy to watch his YouTube videos. Um, if you need any of the materials to tie this fly, like I said, the craft fur, you can pick that up sometimes at a local Hobby Lobby or Walmart even has craft fur. Um, watch the lengths on them. Sometimes the lengths are pretty short when you find them at the craft stores. We have it at uh, our shop here and we have the rest of the materials to tie it to. So if you need any of the materials, I always put links to them down below in the description. You can find them by going to the links or just going on to our webpage and searching them. Thanks for watching everybody. If you like this, please give me the thumbs up, uh, you know, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And until next week when I bring you a new fly tying video, I'm Sean Holsinger.